All right, ready? Yeah. Mm. Oh, there we go. It's not talking 360. It's talking mm. black boxes. Two black boxes enter. One leaves. Well, four. <laughs> four. <laughs> yeah, so, all right, all right. So, black box day. You know where this came from? Uh, no, wait. Where did this come from? It came because Randy and I are not ready to do flow yet. <laughs> we were like messing we, around at the house. Yeah, uh, we got that flow meter in, that really nice Hawk expensive flow meter. We were playing around with it and messing with MP60s in your tank last night. And we thought, and we got enough. We got, have enough to talk about. So let's talk way about more black to learn. boxes. Yeah. So much more to learn before I'm ready to have this like uh, flow conversation. So uh, maybe another week. Jammed it in. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I've been, we've been working on this like all crazy, all three of us. We had the data, you know. We have all the data that we're going to show you today. You know, some mounting heights, some par spread, spread spectrum, and par for all of these four. Uh, and we had it all, and we crunched it into a video today. All right. So here is the number one most important question of the whole day. Right yeah. Here. Dave. Why are we talking about black box? <laughs> the why black box video. All right. There it is. So here's the here's the answer is, uh, oh, do we go black? Mm. There's, a, right. there's a couple reasons why we're talking black box today. There's a, actually three, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Well, so number one here is, uh, I think Dave can show it. I don't know. All right, so Dave That's is cool. having... Uh, right. Well, the number, one of the number one reasons, like, mm -hmm. they're popular. People use them. They're, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. So here's the thing, we did every like known demand. I think we're on like like 30 lights now, I don't know. Maybe it's only yeah, 20. Yeah, four uh, months worth of light like testing, yeah. Randy came in the office the other day and said, I think I've had enough. Enough light, I'm ready, <laughs> like, light, like, stop. All right, so uh, here's the deal. I saw, I thought about the other day, and I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, let's order four of these things. And by the other day, it was like a couple weeks ago, yeah. we sent it in. And uh, we had Brent uh, test them all. And we're gonna do a box off, box off. Yeah. Not whether or not these things are any good, they're great, the best out there, the worst out there which one is the best and hopefully have some information on like actually how to use it. Yeah, well, and we picked the four most popular ones out there and mm -hmm. actually reading a bunch of comments, I think in every lighting video, almost every single lighting video I did, there was a comment, at least one in there that says, what about the black box? What about, you know, this one from Amazon? What about this one? Oh, I use this one. So it's really interesting to finally like, put some data behind what's out there because nobody's done this before. Well, we did it a long time ago, but like not this way that we did it today. So, I mean, if you go look around, uh, Dave, are you able to show that photo there? Yeah. Ah. All right, so yeah, I mean, I, that was kind of the inspiration here. You see this stuff like all over Reef to Reef. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of photos. You know, people are asking questions, how to get the results. And in this specific one, you can even see like visually that like certain parts of the tank are way brighter than other ones. Yeah. Right, so it's just a good question. How do I use this to achieve results? And uh, mm -hmm. next photo here. And you can see the same thing here, you know? And, but, and there's different types of results. Yet, on the other end of the spectrum is this. What? I, I mean, mean, awesome take. You can't. Right? You cannot say that they don't grow coral. Mm. No, 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 no. So here's the thing: is what is the difference uh, between you know the ones that are doing that kind of work and the ones that, that aren't? Yeah. And I think I mean this guy always pops up as a great name. <laughs> Good question. Let's find out. So that's what we're going to do today: is we're going to find out what the difference is between a, a bunch of them, but more specifically, like the difference between this and like some other stuff mm. that's out there, and how to use this to achieve the result. Like end yeah. of story, right? Yeah. All right. So. This has actually been a journey for me personally. Yeah, I know. So, right here, Black Box 2017. Yeah. All right, yeah. so like, uh, there I was. I, uh, think, I think after this video, you said you'll never talk about Black Boxes again. Oh, I absolutely did. So I said I would never, ever, ever, ever do it because it, it like, like it didn't go right. I didn't know how to talk about it right then. Yeah. I had some concerns, but like I put them on too a little heavy mm. and like, I don't know, man. So the inspiration of that one was actually, I just heard so many people out there saying, well, a black box is the same thing as a Radeon, yeah. as a whatever. And I'm like, well, that's not necessarily true. Mm. Let's show the differences. But like you're showing one hundred dollar light next to an eight hundred dollar light. It's kind of unfair. Yeah. It's not. It's just it was stupid. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it just wasn't like a good thing. And then mm -hmm. also, if you go to the next photo, you know we took it apart and we we're like looking at all the parts. And uh, here's the thing, man, is uh, uh, like we joined in in the conversation of mm -hmm. like 
what does UL mean and safety and yeah, all that other yeah. stuff. And like people like did not like that at all. No. Right? Like the mm-hmm. whole safety thing. So you're not gonna hear any of that crap today. Uh, <laughs> so you like do UL safety, we'll, whatever you care about. We'll talk a, we'll talk a little bit about safety and components, but it'll be completely at the end. So if you don't want to hear that stuff, uh, just you know, I don't tune care. Out there, you know, at this point, everybody knows the whole conversation of it. So, you know, mm-hmm. take that part for whatever it be yeah. uh, and move on. We're going to talk about performance today mostly. Mostly. Uh, all right. So, that nature, man, is my favorite other meme I, we see all the time. <laughs> uh, is uh, Oh, this one's tiny. I must have gave you a tiny little file. Right. So, sometimes you got to poke that bear. Sometimes you got to poke the bear. All right. So, I bet you like half the audience right now is like bracing for impact. Right. You know? Okay. So, there's two camps. There's one camp that's uh, either going to say, why the hell are you guys talking about this stuff that you don't even sell? And it's the you know the cheap end or whatever if they want it, whatever they want to call it. And then there's the other end that's like, finally they're talking about my black box and I use it and uh, just please don't hurt me when you talk about it. That is exactly it. My buddy's like, how would you ever do this <laughs> this this uh, video? Like, only thing you're gonna do is like take all the Bradyon fans out there and have them go W T F. Yeah. What, are, what are you doing with it? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, uh, on the other end, and everybody, if you're honest about it, it also isn't going to look like a radio. And so, the, like, everybody else is going to be like, well, come on, stop, stop poking at, at my thing. So here's the thing, yeah. man, is uh, that is basically it. Is you see these radions out there, you see the black boxes mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. We're going to find the middle ground. I'm just going to tell it like it is. So that's that. And here's the thing. I'm going to try to keep it like if you were just in the room with Randy and I, yeah. having a beer, like tea, we just, maybe, psh, and you're asking real opinions, and uh, I don't know, we're just going to share it the way it is. So there's a whole bunch of black boxes out there uh, I mean, that look that, like this. In that sense, I've, I've had these before. I, it was one of, some of my first lights on my frag tank and uh, were a black box. I had two of them. Mm-hmm. Put it over a 40 breeder. I mean, I had no idea about mounting height or what the intensity was or par and why my corals might be doing good with them and why some might not be doing good with them. Uh, and so, I mean, I've used these and I know they work. I used it too. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know it uh, until I took one of these apart. So I took this thing apart and uh, realized it's just like a flimsy, like le- like a license plate with some LEDs glued yeah. to it. Okay, I actually bought one of these boards yeah. uh, off of I don't know if it was eBay or Amazon mm-hmm. or where it was at the time, and then swapped out the t- or the fluorescent lights in my BioCube. Yeah, yeah, and it felt right underneath that little plastic shield. It worked great it until half of them burnt out, and even worked okay for a little while like that. Even. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, so I think a lot of us have used that kind of thing. And so here's the thing is uh, what are we testing? So we've got we've got four, you know, four of the most popular. So what we did, we went on Amazon, we found, uh, we searched in ReefLight, we found the most, four most popular. Uh, so you've got like, and I've seen people commenting already pre, um, I, so far before we even started the stream, the, you know, the Viper Spec, uh, Viper Spectra, mm-hmm. the uh, Fleazon, the Wills, the Mars Aqua, Mm-hmm. There's at least one or two or multiple owners of this in the crowd as we speak right now. Oh, for sure. Definitely the Viper Spectra seems yeah. to be the one everybody's talking about. All right, so how, this is how we selected them right here. So uh, we just went in and searched for the ones that had the most reviews. Yeah. That was it. Like, I just wanted to pick out the stuff that I think that you guys are probably using. Uh, and so I'm sure there's a hundred other ones out there that we didn't use, but mm-hmm. that's how the methodology is picked. It's just the ones that have the most reviews, seems like people are using, and uh, I don't know, we'll go from there. All right, so uh, this is kind of what they look like, is underneath there's just a big sheet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, uh, the way that we're gonna go about this, I think that one actually slides out of the out of order, but like uh, the way we're gonna go about this is the same as all the other lights out there that we've done. Spread, spectrum, and par. Boom, done, right? That's what we wanna know. And so like uh, this is a, the slide right here, shows uh, how many lights uh, do you need, how do you space them, how high should they be mounted. We'll get that exact same, same information for all four of these, and then when we get it, we're gonna like vote one to the top, right? Yeah. For spread, spectrum, and par. Yeah, so we're covering spread, we're covering spectrum, we're par, and so we'll, we'll talk about spread between all four of them, and we'll vote a winner. We'll mm-hmm. talk about spectrum between all four of them, and show you the data, and pick a winner. And then we'll talk about par, and then there's a overall winner, kind of. I'm gonna tell you, there is one clear winner, too. Yeah. Right, there is one, I think, that outperformed the other three by a pretty significant margin. 
And there's one that really did pretty poorly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. All right. So uh, spread. We're going to burn through this. I want to show you exactly what we're looking for in spread here. So the first thing that we're looking for when we look at all the lights is how they perform at six inches. Yep. I'm going to tell you right now that none of, most lights don't do all that well at six inches, but that's like kind of the baseline that we mm -hmm. start at. That's where we start all these of our tests. These things perform terrible at, at six inches. I think everybody knows you got to mount these a little higher. We've so. had other lights uh, you know, that we actually carry on our website that perform terrible at six inches, but they're not designed to be mounted at six inches. That's the thing. They're not. So like ignore a little bit what you're seeing here, but it's the baseline for where we're going to go. So pay attention. Here we go. All right. So this is the first thing. If you see that little orange uh, uh, blob down there, you can look at the distribution here in the little grid if you want. You can see all the different part numbers and we put it up there for those that want to review, but I'm going to focus on two numbers there uh, or three rather. There's a four inch ring. You, know, you can see down in the bottom here, right next to that orange little block. Yep. This is 30 and three. Yep. There is a 12 inch ring and a 20 inch ring. So we're testing how the PAR is actually spreading out. And in this case, at six inches with the Aqua Mars, the four inches in the center is 1,283 PAR. Mm -hmm. And then four inches to the right of that drops to 393. And then four inches to the right of that drops to 44. Yeah. So, that means the outside 20 inches of this thing is 3% of the center, which is only 8 inches away. Which is not very good spread. No. But, not again, not intended to be at 6 inches yeah. with this type of light. A lot of other lights we did uh, didn't perform real well this close, so either. But I just wanted to explain what you're seeing. And uh, we're going to pick one that does well here, but we're also going to go along and step yeah. it up. So what we're looking for is the most, or the most even spread possible that we can get with these lights. Uh, and we're also looking at you know, the point where we don't lose too much light spill out of the tank. I'm going to tell you already, there's a story that's in here that you should look for, and that it's, uh, you know, a lens is like uh, an engineered, mm. uh, it's like an engine for light, right? And so it will distribute light in a desired pattern. And the lenses on these things are, you know, commodity lenses that are pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. uh, the stuff that is specifically designed for the application, like you see on some of the higher end lights, perform better, as a, that's the thing. However, mm. there is a unifying factor here. Like, if you raise them up, all of a sudden, the engineering of the lens matters less and less and less and yeah. less. And so that is what you're going to see here is the way to get around the fact that uh, uh, you know it's only 100 bucks and has you know commodity mm. lenses on it. We're just going to raise it up a little bit, and then you're going to get almost the same results. Yep. So you're just going to kind of see where you want to do that uh, in this. So just look for that message while we're going through here. All right. So, okay. so you just saw the Mars Aqua at six inches, and now we've got three more at six inches to look at. All right. This is the Fleezon. All right, so Fleezon, uh, 1,034 in the center, uh, then drops four inches to the right to 446 and then to 125, which means 12% 12, 12 of the light on the outside is the inside and 44 in the middle ring. Yep. All right, next one. Uh, Viper Spectra, let you hit it. The Viper Spectra, uh, about the same. Uh, 1171 in the outer, in the inner ring and the outer ring, 112. Uh, but 9.5% difference between that outer edge. So basically 9.5% of the light is getting to the out, outer edges, front, back, left, right. All right. And then lastly, the, the wills. All right, so this is 1,154, uh, and then drops to 486, and then drops to 117. I mean, what I'm seeing here is like three or four lights that are really close to the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's they're really between 10, 11, and 12 in the center, and low hundreds to below hundreds in the in the outer ring. Yep. So that is exactly it. I I mean. I, I think it's very safe to say at this point that nobody would use one of these lights at six inches. And, no. and to I wouldn't fair, recommend it. We haven't found any light that we would light at six inches, but that Zero is where we started lights. so that we can create uh, our ideal height. Because mm -hmm. at six inches uh, is where almost none of these lights actually spill outside of the tank. Right. All of it's going in. And that's why we start there. So when we start raising it up, that we find an unacceptable amount of efficiency loss or it starts spilling into the room all over the place yeah. and it's measured by average par dropping. That's why we start so low. All right, so now mm. we're gonna get into the real world. So I'm just speaking for mm. myself here, but I think most people would say, how high would you prefer to mount the lights over your tank. If you had your option and it didn't matter, performance, yeah. about how high would you like it to be off of the tank? And from, you know, even myself and from what I've seen from other reefers, 
eight to nine inches is around that edge. And actually, you know, when we tested, I'd say a vast majority of the lights we tested over the last four months fall somewhere in between like an eight to 10 or somewhere range. So uh, we decided to test these at nine inches, which is kind of like a, an average mounting height that you would expect. So I'm gonna share why I think eight to 10, or actually I'm gonna say eight to 12 is probably about average. the pocket yeah. where most people mm -hmm. like to be. So that part of it is because most tanks are in a living space and, it, and after you get past like that 10, 12 inches, the lights get so high above the tank that when you're in a sitting position, they go in your yep. eyes, right? Yep, yep, and yep. So the closer the tank they are, the, the nicer. Also, like you can use legs and stuff a lot more attractively right. when they're only a matter of inches. Uh, after, obviously you're not gonna mount two feet uh, using legs in most cases. So mm -hmm. uh, there's some out there, but they're a little less rarely or more rarely used. So most of the time you're gonna end up hanging it from the ceiling and mm -hmm. some more complicated install and stuff. So I think that's part of the reason. Uh, well, there's lots of reasons that uh, everybody install in all kinds of different sizes. But at nine inches is the where we selected. And at nine inches, Seeing kind of the same from Aquamars. So 1,000 in the center, four inches over, 389, and then another four inches uh, is uh, 73. Yeah, yeah so, it didn't really gain much spread into the outer edges. I think we were at what? We were at three or five on the, from the outer to the center on the last one uh, at six inches. So here we are three inches higher, and we've gained you know uh, a few percentage points of spread out towards the outer edges. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna save the suspense. Mar Aqua Mars like didn't perform the best in any of his tests. No. So uh, you'll see that kind of come along, but uh, the next one's actually performed better. Yeah, so here, the fleas on, uh, again at nine inches, 803, uh, uh, 411 and 163 as we step from the center out to the edges. Uh, actually making some pretty good gains here. You know, 20% of the light is uh, making it out, or 20% 20, 20 probably a gain of like, I think, seven to 10, whatever it was last time. Uh, but as you can see by the heat map, a lot more uh, well distributed than three inches ago. Okay, so this is actually, before we get to the next two, I wanted to share an important factor. So a lot of you are probably like, well, what does good look like? Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, so yeah. Uh, with uh, like a T5 fixture on there, the outside edges of the tank are within like 40% of the top. Yeah, so and when so you're seeing these, you know, 10, 18, what, 20% numbers, uh, mm -hmm. That's half the amount. That's half of what T the T five gold so standard does. The T five would actually say the inverse. So it'd be six the sixty yep. percent uh, on True. the outside. So yep. ten is actually a pretty far drop from yep. like kind of gold standard of. Uh, I'm trying to decide if gold, platinum, or palladium is the right don't, standard these days. But, uh, yeah, so like one of the things that worked really well in the past. So all right, so now we got the uh, the wills mm -hmm. right. All right, so the wheels uh, had 892, 453, 166, had 18% of the intensity on the outside edges as the inside, and the middle ring was about 50% drop four inches from the center. So, uh, you know, uh, it's starting to get better. Yeah. Did we get to the Viper Spectre in there? Uh, no, it's in there somewhere. I think maybe we missed there it. it. There it is. There it is. Yeah. All right. And then the Viper Spectra, you know, about the same thing here. 873, 450, 175 as we go from the center to the outer ring. Uh, it looks like almost identical to the, the, flea, uh, the fleas on at 20 and 51%. All right, so at this point, uh, I'm going to try to burn through these because I don't want to bore you to yeah, death with parameter par stuff. So I think we can all say that nobody really would use these things at, at nine inches or, or you're going to have serious... Uh, you're gonna have major things to overcome. And like when you saw some of those pictures earlier, like on the camera, you could visually see the like mm. the triangle of light coming out from it. I, if you can see it on the camera, you don't need a par meter to measure it. Yeah. So the next step up as we changed our mounting height was, where's the 15%? Where are we losing 15% of the light outside of our test tank? Uh, Cause that's usually where we stop. That's where, exactly where we stopped the test for all the other lights we tested. So as you raise it up, some of that light just starts to spill out of the tank. We don't like more than four to fifteen percent to be out of there because you're losing efficiency. You bought, all, you know, you spent all the money on the light. Why would you allow more than fifteen percent of it and not even in the tank? Uh, and that's where we tested this next setting. I'm gonna give you one caveat yeah. here, though. Normally, you spend eight hundred bucks on a light, so I don't want to waste a whole lot of that. On a hundred dollar light, if I waste a little bit more than fifteen percent, so be it. Like I can raise a little higher. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, but uh, so it, it, in that frame of mind, mm. let's see what happens when we raise them up. How far it took to get to fifteen percent? Yeah. Starting with Aqua Mars. All right, here we are at 20 inches. It took 20 inches to raise it up to get to the point where we lost 15 percent. 
and still at 20 inches, the outside edge of the tank is 27% of the center. Yeah, I mean, here at 20 inches, we're seeing that, that 27 and 60% is kind of where, you know, the fleasons of the world were at like nine inches. Yeah, so, I mean, the Aquamars here has really focused lenses. So just know that when you're using it, because uh, you probably don't have a par meter if you're using right. one of these things. So now you have an idea of the distribution of light at various uh, uh, depths. So you can start to set it, probably tune it, as well as uh, you know space them appropriately to get what you're looking for here. But note that the four inches in the center will be 537 and then eight inches to the right will be 146 so it drops That's out pretty a big fast. drop yeah all right so the next one the fleas on uh 62 and 21 percent here but this is at 14 inches yep. so this is where we lost the 15 percent uh from the total average par that you see at the bottom here 272 uh at six inches you know, that's 15% of where it was at six inches. Still not super great performance on the out edges, but like at least I'm able to do it at 14 inches and not 20. Because 14 yeah. is pretty close, or closer to that 10 or 12 that people are looking for. It's pretty some, high, but... And the, there's some mounting options that'll get you up to 14 inches if you want. You know, some mm -hmm. arms that can connect to the back of the tank. You can hang these things from that will get you to that 14 inches. So... That's true. You don't uh, have by, to hang it. By Perspector here? Ah, much 14 better. 14 inches again, uh, but this time with 37%, you know, from the center to the outer and s the same 60% from the middle to the, uh, to the center. Okay, so still not ideal. Like, I still have 556 in the center and 210 on the outside edges of the tank. It's it, pretty big. It's, uh, it's a big bit. Like, 37% is way better than 20. We are definitely going in the right direction. Right. Here, right? <laughs> so it's really encouraging to see that. And then the next one was the wheels. The wheels. And still, still, 32%, 62%, not bad. It's right. getting there. But there's, there's a moral in the story here, yeah. actually. We can so, improve. Uh, if you looked at all of these things, the lenses all kind of look the same, they except do. for uh, the Mars Aqua has like a dimply, ripple oh, yeah. look, like a diffused look on mm -hmm. it. Maybe that's why it's actually performing the worst. Like spotlight. But, yeah, it's, but all of them kind of look the same, but you're seeing in the data that just because it looks the same doesn't mean it performs the same. True, right? yeah. Uh, and I think that's a really important factor. So I think hopefully valuable for this so that when you're shopping for one of these things, you, you now can get the one that fits your needs. So if light efficiency matters to you, like, uh, if you know, for me, example, for example, like if I bought, uh, you know, this Radeon and I spent, you know, you know, 800 bucks on it, uh, it matters to me whether I'm losing, you know, extra light outside of my tank. So I probably don't want to go as high or higher than 15 percent. Uh, so if light efficiency matters to you, then those 14 inches, those 20 inches, it's probably where you want to stop if you want to keep as much par in the tank as possible. Uh, but we wanted to continue the test to see just how far it took before it spread out as evenly as possible, almost like T5s. Yeah, so that's the moral of the story. Keep going up, you'll get better performance. In this case, you'll start to spill. So, but if it's 100 bucks and then I spill 25% of it instead of 15, I kind of wasted 25 bucks. Yeah. I'm willing to make that sacrifice in order to get better performance. So this is what we did, hmm. and we're gonna burn through these two, is we did one series at 18 inches and one at 24 inches, just so you can see what you're doing if you raise it all the way up. Yep. So, at 18 inches, the uh, flea's on. Uh, he, look at this, 42 and 70% were improving on that spread. Uh, double than where you know, we were you know at like nine inches so more importantly the the hot spot that of uh, the unusable par in the center is that getting five coming down yeah. right like mm -hmm. nobody needed a thousand par or 800 par or 600 par Coral the 400 <laughs> is now gone down and the outsides are going up and we're now within 42 percent still a big uh, chasm in there but like mm -hmm. it's definitely at 18 inches now much better next one uh, Viper, Viper Aspira, Viper Aspira, same thing, 45, 25, or 45, 65%, four hundreds in the center, which is in a, a usable range, and 191 in the outer rings. I know I'm boring these people to death with par numbers, <laughs> we're, trying right? to we're gonna get, get through it, because yep. it's important. Uh, and then uh, the wills. Notice uh, we didn't do Mars Aqua because the, it was already at 20 last time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so we skipped over Mars Aqua for 18, but yeah, you know, same story here. 400s, 194s in the outers, it, much better spread than where we were at six inches. All right, 24, this is the last part number, I promise. And so we moved it all the way up to 24 inches. This is two foot uh, feet off of the top of the tank. Probably the highest that anybody's really feasibly gonna go. This is Mars Aqua at 24 inches. It looks like the other three did at 18 inches, but here, you know, we are uh, eight inches higher. 
Yeah, just different lens design. You'll see it later, and that's probably the result. Mm -hmm. All right, the flea's on. Look at this spread. Now, 55% of the uh, center to the outer ring, so a lot smoother you know, spread here. Uh, 156 in the outer ring, not bad. The total average par has gone down yes. to achieve that uh, even performance, but you know there's a trade-off there, so you can decide for yourself. Okay. The Viper Spectra here. At 21, 24 inches, it's about the same story. So the big thing for me in this one, actually, yeah. is if you look at the 287, is right below it is 203, which is 70%. So That's... it's not just the outer edges, it's that middle ring, too, that, like, if within 70% is really good performance. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is really awesome at 24 inches off the tank. Mm -hmm. So you've got a hood or a fish room or anything that allows for that, this is a good option. Well, this is, I mean, looking at the 52% here from the center to the outer ring on the vi uh, here, that's getting within those uh, ranges like a eight bulb T5 spread. All right. So uh, summary on this thing is, and uh, we're going to pick a winner based on, oh, we got oh, one we more. Got one more. Oh, the one, right, my one bad. More. The wheels. All right, similar performance. Yep. 75% and 56%. So 307 all the way down to 173. All right, so I think you, we told you the story before, yep. before you even started looking at it, so you see it. As you take a pretty focused lens, uh, off the shelf, you know, inexpensive lens, and just kind of start moving it up, mm. it performs better and better and better. And now, you don't have to bring it up to two feet, you mm. don't have to do it at six inches, but now you can make an informed decision as to, for your tank, what is the right height? And now, at least between these four popular op options on Amazon, based on reviews anyway, you can decide like which one's right for you. Yeah. But we're gonna give a winner based on uh, spread here yeah. uh, ba uh, from both of us. So originally we had the uh, winners for each, each individual, six, nine, 18, 15%, all this other stuff. And you know, for me, there was like there was two stands out pretty standouts pretty much through. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fleazon made big jumps and big gains. You know, going from like nine inches to uh, to its fourteen, especially to its eighteen, and the Viper Spira. So these two uh, win it for me for spread. Yeah, I think we ultimately decided, decided the Fleazon was the uh, nudged out as a winner, but yeah. I, I I don't think he. Either one of those two, uh, flip a quarter, you'd never know the difference between them. The Mars Aqua was the, the loser for me. I mean, I have to say it. Yeah. 20 inches before it lost 15%, and then even at 24 inches didn't perform as well as these other ones. It's not, it's the bottom of the four for me. I really hate saying anybody is uh, gonna, uh, any brand is a loser in any case, but uh, it, it just it was, for me, it was actually the most expensive of it the was, ones we yeah, bought. It was, yeah, this is like the highest and price And just paid. based on that data, it would be, wouldn't be the one that I would use. So, no. All right, so Spectrum. Uh, this is a really interesting question here too. So like, is an uh, inexpensive LED gonna put out crappy Spectrum that nobody wants, or is it gonna put out good Spectrum that everybody likes? Mm, yeah. uh, not many people own a tool to measure at home, so let's find out the answer. So this is right. important to us in our, in, you know, in our testing of all our lights, because we try to target you know, that 400 to 500 wide blue band as possible. We've seen clear winners in some of the higher end ones, uh, LEDs. We've seen clear losers in some of the, uh, you know, some of the more expensive LEDs out there too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we just wanted to see how these rate. Uh, it's, these are all full spectrum. You know, that's what they, they claim. So they have a blue channel and then they have a white channel that kind of mixes your green and red and what cool white and warm white LEDs. Uh, and here's kind of what we came up with for uh, shooting the spectrum of those. All right, so does this one say which one it is? I hope so. Uh, this is the Mars oh, one. this is Mars. Right. So this is all channels at 100%. Yeah, you're going to have to, I forgot to put the label on it. So, but they're labeled in the files. So this is the Mars. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, it's kind of space needly. It right? is. So this is kind of, uh, you look at, see, see how they're from 420 till about where the blue starts to go up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, there's a big gap there. Yeah. And, We've seen that in like a couple other LEDs, but maybe not as space needly. There's a uh, minimal UV in there, minimal kind of deeper blue. Mm -hmm. There is some there. And I don't know, for the dollar, this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know this would grow coral, yep. and, end of story. So uh, it might not look as nice as some items and it might not be ideal for all corals, but it will grow coral and most of the corals would probably adapt to this. Mm. All right, what's the next one? Uh, next one's the Fleazon. Fleazon. So even thinner, even more space needly, uh, thinner in that four, 
uh, you're to the right of 420 here. Uh, actually, so I, I'm going to note here because it's a little different. This is the only one that actually peaked at 460. Yep. Which is right of where most most reef lights actually peak around 450, 450 445. 455, yeah. somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah. And it does matter. So like uh, mm. these these corals actually absorb energy like you know a lot better at very specific wavelengths. And in this case, we've not only pegged it at a pretty narrow uh, position right. where it's all aimed at, mm. but I wouldn't say that would be my ideal position for it. I'd like to see that uh, a little bit further to over left. to the left, yeah. uh, closer to like 450, 455. Uh, next one is the Viper, the Viper Spectra. So the widest that we've seen so far between the four, and actually the widest of the four as we go through the next one. Yeah. But uh, actually, not bad. I, I agree. This is actually better than some of the expensive options it that is, you've seen. That's there. true, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, you'll see the, some of the UVs represented there. It's not certainly not the best no but it's not the worst that we've seen and it's done doing it at, well, how much was this thing the, the viper spire is 120 at 120 bucks so uh not great not poor uh, but i'm gonna tell you right already right, already right now it was the best of it the was four because up next we have the wills which is similar to the uh fleas on uh a little bit further to the left of 460 uh, but again same thing space needle all right so uh, what was the next photos that we have up here? I believe we ah, the custom ones. Yeah, the, the, our custom settings. So what you just saw there was you just turned all of these have a white channel and a blue channel. We just, just turned crank them, them all the way up. So this is everything that you get from this light, everything available. Yeah, so we're going to actually turn it to what we'd actually run it at. So which... Brent, Brent and I held each one of these over a tank, and we played with the settings. So uh, with the three, the fleas on the wheels and the Mars, it's just turned knobs, two knobs, one for white, one for blue. Uh, and then the actual, the, Vi the Viper Spectra is uh, digital, channel one, channel two with a remote. So in all instances, they roughly ran landed at 100% blue channel and about 30% of the white channel. So we could actually test that here because it t tells us the other ones were knobs where we're like, that's about 30%. So that's an important factor here mm -hmm. that like, actually, uh, I don't like about a lot of lights out there is there's so much white in there. And I'm not talking about like, I don't mm. necessarily like all my tanks to be like overtly blue. No. But it's just a waste of money and space to have all of these white LEDs in there use. and then turn them all the way down to 30. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. Uh, and I think 30 was accurate here. Some people might go 40, but I don't think anybody's going 50 or above. You start so it's just a total waste of money. And like, mm. you could have got better PAR. So those PAR numbers that you saw earlier, Note that you're Based not going to really channels. actually achieve those. Yeah. You're going to be like 35% uh, lower once you turn down the, all white the whites all mm -hmm. the way down. And we mm -hmm. measured that. We'll share that a little bit later. But uh, So note that, that when you turn the thing down to 30%, you turn down performance pretty significantly. Mm. All right. So these are the four spectrums after we tuned it to about 30%. And you'll yeah. see all the white stuff come way down, which is the combination of green, uh, yellow, orange, and red. So this is the will. Uh, this is the wills. Wills uh, again, that kind of space needle look. So all we did here really is drop some of the green, yellow, red. Uh, yep. Same thing. Mars Aqua here. Uh, some drop some green, yellow, red. That peak, uh, that more UV starts to become a little more prominent in that, you know, ratio. Um, I would because we got rid of some of that white. I'd call Mars your second best. Oh, for sure. Yeah, uh, the one of the whitest. Yep. And then the next one, Flea's on. Uh, yeah. Same, about the same as the wheels, but this is that again, 460 spike. Yep. And then the Viper. The and you'll, you'll see that you, I mean, this is, you're just doing this to the eye. I can see that by the fact that there's more green in here, mm -hmm. that you guys actually tuned this one up. And you know why you're probably seeing more green in this one? Mm. Is they probably turned up the blues, uh, or the, the addition of that wider blue spectrum needed more green to balance it out to the eye. I'm just mm. guessing there, but just looking at it, I saw immediately that uh, the green, yellow, and red is higher than the other one. So. Yep. There you go. So that's the spectrum in there. Uh, I think we all agree that uh, I think it probably everybody out there is probably like, if I was going to buy one just based on spectrum. Clear winner, Viper Spectrum. Yep. All right. So here is one of the biggest challenges with uh, this kind of design mm. is when we're now going to go do our like uh, dynamic. Dynamic spectrum test. Yeah. So this is that shimmer look, those different, you know, separation of colors in hard to do, especially with some lens designs like this, where 
each color is its own cone like this, right? Mm -hmm. And the, further, the closer to the tank you have, the more individualized those cones are. So basically what they're relying on with all of these different lights and the lenses that are fairly focused is that the cones are essentially going to overlap each other enough that it blends visually. Visually, it kind of does. Uh, but you can look to the bottom and see red and green and even the mix of blue and white shooting around. Mm -hmm. So if you can see with the naked eye, it's not actually blended. And this stuff matters because it's that you know, photon that's actually energizing you know, the photosynthetic process with the mm. coral and they're adapted to that specific thing. And some of them are not good to be blasted with. So like some of the ones that have UV, I do not want a laser beam of UV, which is a very destructive wavelength of light mm. to you know, be hitting anything super strong. And uh, you know, red and green, they all have kind of like unknown effects. I don't want laser beams of that. And again, if I can see that little dot of red shooting all over the place, yeah. it is a concentrated component. And part of the reason it's concentrated is because the ripples on the surface of the water actually focus like another lens and compound that and shoot it down as that little lens. So that's when we put the little meter underneath yep. and we take 10 shots and we see how much it changes. Now something like a T5 bulb or uh, like the Kessel that puts all the lenses underneath a yeah. single lens and blends it together, you take 10 shots, it looks the same. Every all, same. all 10 of them look the same, yeah. yeah. So this one, this is one of the bigger challenges. And I'm gonna tell you how to solve it in just a second, or at least the, to the best of your ability. Right. And it is solvable, but it, this is probably one of those like unknown factors where some people are having success and some people aren't, is probably one of the reasons. So which one is this here? Uh, this one is the Mars. Okay, so Mars, this is 10 shots of the Mars. We shot a little video of it. And you so can see over 10 seconds here. The fluctuation is what we're seeing here. And those are the individual bands of uh, LED color that you kind of see flashing through. You can see the red and the green mm -hmm. shooting up and even at parts of the UV going in different directions. So the, the meter is telling us that this is not blended perfectly. However, I will tell you, that this is not that much worse than some of the other options that, that we've, we've already tested. tested. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, there are parts of it that are uh, unappealing to me, but this isn't like super, super terrible as judged by the meter. Mm -hmm. All right, next one. Uh, Viper Spectra. No, oh, no. Oh, sorry, Fleazon. The Fleazon here. Fleazon here. All right, Fleazon performs better. Look Why? at that, it's only green and red fluctuations, but there's, uh, all of the concentration of blue LEDs are focused on that 460, and so why would the, it fluctuate very much? Isn't like 60% of the LEDs in there? That tells me, I, I mean, I haven't looked at the exact LEDs in here, but looking at this, I can tell you right now that there's probably only one type of blue oh, LED blue, yeah. in here, only one spectrum offering. The fact that it isn't changing at all with these lenses like that tells me that there there's isn't blue, multiple types of There's it. blue in here, but there's only like one color, one, one color range of blue, blue right? Yeah. And that's also why it's so thin. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just guessing here because I, I haven't read the you know, specs on this one, but yeah. like, uh, but you'll see, actually, it looks like it's performing well, but that's actually because there's fewer types of LEDs, most likely. Yeah. All right, next one. Next one's a Viper spy, uh, Spira Spectra. So obviously more than one blue color LED. They got some UV in there too. And then we see the fluctuations in those channels. Yeah, so you can see that light blue go up. You can see the UV go up. You can see the dark uh, uh, area or the deeper blue. You can see the red, the green. So you can tell just by looking at this as it's changing from the different shots and how the water is uh, refracting it through to the meter mm -hmm. that this has multiple types of LEDs in it. Yeah. And so good and bad, like great that they have that wider band, but the actual implementation and design mm -hmm. through these lenses is producing probably the worst performance in the dynamic. And again, it's shooting around little laser beams of, of you know, concentrated components of this spectrum. Yep. And depending on where it is, it might get that a lot of the time of the day, or it might you know, kind of end up blending mm -hmm. together. It's hard to say. Next one. Uh, and the wills, uh, similar to the fleas on, except for its peak is shifted to the left a little bit. Uh, but same thing, you're not seeing the blue you know, 4, 454 change at all. You're seeing the green and the red. Yeah, so that's the Wills and the, yep. the Fleazon. Wills and the Fleazon, roughly the same. So this is actually an important factor here. If you look at the Wills and the Fleazon, they look exactly they look the same. identical. I mean, right? switches, We open dials. them up and we'll show you later. Uh, I, 
have a suspicion they're not from the same place and they just copied each other, <laughs> but they look identical. So I'm not surprised that you see similar performance, similar performance. in Spectrum and, and uh, even the dynamics. So voting on winners uh, for the available Spectrum, like the, who's got the biggest, widest available Spectrum, we gave it up to the Viper Spectra. Yeah, I, I know that it isn't going to be uh, perfect in the blending, uh, so be it. But if you're gonna give me an option, and uh, I think this one serves my corals needs the best. However, mm. here's the thing, is- It's a loser in the, it's, it's our loser in our dynamic test, but the way around it. So how do you solve that? Yeah. So if you can imagine that that lens is shooting out a little cone, you know, coming mm -hmm. down, well, six inches off the water, that cone isn't actually all that big. It's pretty small. Yeah. yeah. But 24 inches off the water, the cone is really big, right? Yep. And so I don't know where you want to mount it, but the higher you mount it, the bigger Even. that cone will be, the less intense it will be, the more that it's overlapping with the other spectrum. So the absolute minimum I would personally mount this thing is that 14 inches minimum. that we saw. But uh, if I could, I'd probably shoot for the 18, 18 just because of the combination of all those LEDs and the lens design. I think that's gonna be your sweet spot. Can you have success lower? Yeah, but if you're asking me what best practice is, I think higher is better, go for as high as you can. Yep, I agree. All right, so PAR, this is actually an interesting one. So here's the deal with PAR. I mean, this one actually irritates me more than any other conversation <laughs> in lighting is because all the people know I talk about lighting is what's a par, what's a par, what's a par, what's a par? Yeah, par wars. It's because the only thing we had to measure it was was, was a par meter. More like, par, more better. More, yeah, more par, more that's better. That's what it's been for yeah, a long time. Uh, like what, horsepower, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So here's the thing, man, is we know so much more about lighting and how to get the right tool for the right job and then how to use it. Mm -hmm. Par is like, I don't know. It, it just isn't my most important factor here. Uh, in this case, I didn't even bother to put the names on because they're all basically the same. Basically, yeah. They're all almost the exact same par. If you care about whether or not one of these is average 25 par more than the other one, uh, well, then I go back and look at our <laughs> data and you'll find the one you wanted. But yeah, I just, just don't really not, think it matters, so I'm not even gonna vote. Not that important. And, and, and then when you'll see down the road, we compare one of these to some other lights and you'll see like, by the time that I raise it up, you know, to a height that I'm comfortable with, uh, by the time that I change my, you know, I lose 70% of my whites to get it in, you know, a spectrum range that I wanna use, you know, the par really becomes pretty low from what you see at like six inches where there's a thousand some. Yeah, so again, I want to clarify, because some yeah. people are like, what do you mean, par doesn't matter? It does matter, obviously. Yeah. I give you all yeah. kinds of goals, you know, for uh, an LPS range, an SPS range. It's just the most par out of the light doesn't necessarily make it any better, especially if it's super focused and unusable. Hmm. Uh, so, like, these, uh, they were all within like 25 of each other or so. so I wouldn't make the decision when it's that close between all these based on that, but the information's there, we left it up there for you so you can make that decision if you want. But for us, I don't think there's a winner or one that matters. There is a winner, but I'm intentionally not saying who it is because like, I wanna get across the point that it shouldn't even be part of the equation yeah, exactly. in this instance. All right. So that leaves us then with getting into the guts of them. All right, well, here's the thing, man. Normally, we wouldn't, like, we, I've never taken a part of a Radeon to show you what's inside of it. And to be honest, man, like, the electronics of a Radeon is, like, uh, over my head. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you what, you know, PWM and how they incorporated yeah. it analog, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they did. I wouldn't be able to tell you that. So, I mean, we don't really dive into that kind of element of it. Mm. But with these things, they're pretty simple. And there's some things about them that... I would want to know before I bought it, yeah. right? Uh, I would want to know, like, uh, and it, you can see with a naked eye if somebody was willing and nice enough to take it apart and show it to you before you bought it. So let's do that. Let's do that. All right, so Mars Aqua. Let's start here, let's see the guts. Yeah, so this one right here, again, has that dimply lens. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like diffused. You would think the diffused, uh, like, little domes on the end would actually disperse the light more actually than the other ones. focuses it more, which is interesting. Because uh, each one of these four have the same, you know, same LED kind of layout pattern. Uh, like, each one of these individual cones that surround the LED is nearly identical across all four. But mm -hmm. just because this one has those things on there, we can, we can see that it's super focused. 
All right, so this is what it looks like on the top. Uh, there's two switches there. One controls the blue, yeah. one controls the white. This uh, is the only couple one, power switches. This is the only one that requires two power cords, one for each channel. I will say, I mean, I don't think it, I mean, they could absolutely put those cords out the back of it. Yeah. There's no reason to have two cords coming out the top because it is absolutely ugly. <laughs> unless, uh, unless you had ceiling uh, plugins, then it works really well. But. There's one piece on here that of all the conversation about safety, I, I really hits home for me. So you'll see those two extra plugs on the top there, like right in the bottom of the, of the screen right yeah, now. Yeah. There's two plugs. So let me tell you what they are for. So uh, I believe what they're for is for you to daisy chain, daisy chain multiple lights together. Okay. Right. Yep. My problem is if anything could be mentioned as a fire hazard on all of these things, it's a 120 volt outlet on the top of it that gets salt spray and stuff. So. Uh, it's mm. not that it's like bad that it's there, because if you used it and put a plug in, another plug in it, then great. It's covered. I'm probably happy that it's there. If you don't use it, cap it. It seems, yeah, it's, it seems just like a, a, an unnecessary risk to take by having just some wide open, you know, plugins uh -huh. or electrical tape. Yeah, Duct like tape. Ran, like a power head gets bumped or falls off and goes upward sprays where it water sprays water all over. That is not where you want it to spray. So, so uh, if you see, when you you're going to use this one, cover those. Yeah, just, I mean, they sell like little child safety things. So if you don't use that mm. thing and plug it with a plug, say plug it. And, and even if you do plug it with a plug, the problem is those ones are actually for like, they're like uh, those hybrid European, uh, yeah. the yep, US yep, yep. ones. There's actually going to be find. quite a bit of exposed outlet area there anyway mm. so i don't know uh, that's my own personal thing like uh uh but inside of it let's look in the guts of the mars here so you might actually say how oh, that looks really familiar uh, and i'm going to tell you why that looks familiar and uh, that is because mars is the one that we did back in 2017 <laughs> the, the first black box video and so for a reference point i didn't share the name of it back then because i didn't want to like oh, that's you right. know, crap you on did. anybody's products yep. out there you know and obviously it's gonna be different than the radion but now we're comparing them against other ones. Yeah, I have no problem though. If you're gonna like take it against its own class and you know measure them against each other, well, I don't know. I feel like you should share. Well, obviously, the most helpful thing to do is to share the which one, one you're actually using. Yeah, right? that's true. Uh, but for those of you who know, that's just in case you're wondering what we did in 2017. It was the Mars Aqua back then, and I, and I did the same thing back then. Is I picked the one that had the most reviews. Yeah. So uh, uh, and so inside of this, though, I gotta tell you, uh, it's kind of sloppy. Right, so, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't expect super nice. I mean, how much was this one? This uh, the <laughs> Mars is the most expensive one at 130. Oh, this is 130. Yeah. That was so it was the most expensive. It's pretty sloppy if you take it apart. There's glue all over the place. Like I, I don't know. So like take it, uh, take that for what you want. Uh, but then inside of it is the LED array. You've seen this before. It's like a license plate, super, super thin. It's very thin. There's no heat sink. Uh, and I'm going to tell you actually an interesting uh, oh. story. I, we didn't do this this time, but we did it last time, right? Yeah, you were telling me about this this morning. You turned them on and left them on for a few minutes. You touched your hand to the back of that license plate heat sink thing, and it was cold. Yeah, so that's just kind of It's close. Okay. So I wanted to know, like, Basically, when I took that heat sink, every other light I've used has big, giant heat sinks on yes. it. And everybody's like, you know, taking heat off of the LEDs is like the most important thing, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they burn out, they shift the spectrum, blah, blah, blah. Mm. All right. So when I took it out, I'm like, I took it out, I'm like, this is a license plate. Like, it's flimsy, you know? Like, there's, it's not heavy. There's nothing mm. to it. And I'm like, how could this be? There's just two fans blowing this thing. Like, this is going to burn out in three seconds. Mm. And then it kind of reminded me how fast the one burned out in my BioCube, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I didn't know. But So I, I turned it to 100%. I wanted to see how hot it got without the fans on. So I left mm. it open, and I turned it on 100%, and I let it go for a couple hours. And I walked up to it, and it was cool to the touch. Yeah. Which is actually worse. So you might think, oh, well, that's great. That's really man. good like, diffusion. Oh, I guess it's getting rid of the heat. Mm. No, it's not. Actually, so there's two elements to it. Like, A, you actually need to transfer the heat from the LED to the heat sink and then use the heat sink to transfer the heat to into the air. Yeah. Right? And so in this case, I mean, my own personal belief is 160 watts of uh, LEDs going into that heater for Trapped. hours. Yeah is going to show like it, it should heat up it shouldn't be cool to the touch yeah which means whatever connection that was 
they have between the LED itself and the license plate mm. isn't transferring the heat. That's what that means to me. Uh, I haven't uh, like taken it apart and proven that. Mm. But now I see why you don't need a bigger heat sink if it's not going to transfer the heat to the heat sink to begin uh, with. That's true. <laughs> so, I, I well, know. I mean, you say license plate and uh, maybe somebody might think that's like a, oh, you're just, you're just knocking what the metal is. No, if you actually go grab your license plate, and a lot of you have held it before, that's like the exact thickness of the metal that these LEDs are on. Let's be frank. I am draw knocking it because it is not. I mean, it's not an eight hundred dollar license. Or <laughs> oh, it's not an eight hundred dollar license. And when I took it out, my experience with it was, whoa. Uh, like yeah. so, it, it, I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, no, but like it was exactly a, a, what it is. a surprise. It was yeah. Like, oh wow, this is no effort into this, hmm. right? So I don't know. So there you go. So that was what it was Mars in Mars Aqua. My, was Mars Aqua one. there. Yeah. Now we're going to go to Willis, and again, okay, so Willis and uh, Fleazon are the about Wh the same. Yeah, so we'll only open one here, and we'll only look at one. No, we did, I'll show you the other one, too. Oh, you bit. did the Fleazon, too? Yeah, that kind of. Okay. Only a little couple shots. All right, so here's the wheels. These actually, the driver, oh, oh so we're here, I'm looking on the right screen. Uh, there you go. So uh, Pl I, one plug on the top. You'll notice that they have that same daisy chain uh, option, so you can plug other lights into lights with the outlet. But in this case, yes. it's a US plug, so uh, you can use it, and when you put the plug in, it will actually so prevent water from going the in. The power for this one actually comes in from the side. Yep. The top is for a daisy chain. That's a, The top is uh, a daisy chain, okay. yeah. But, and then if I wanted to cap it with like a childproof cap, I could absolutely Find do it in that. Find the hardware store. Because it's not a European mm -hmm. hybrid plug. Plug, yep, right? Yep, yep. Uh, all right, so that's what the outside of the thing looks like. It's got two knobs, one for blue, one or one Pretty for... Pretty standard. Yeah. All right, inside it actually was interesting. So these drivers look like something like legitimate LED drivers. Yeah, so they they're actually, uh, they, I don't I don't know if we have a close-up shot of them or not, but... I can see LED uh, driver written on there. Oh, yeah, there is a close-up shot. Okay, there, are, there is a close-up shot here. So it's CE, which is... It has the same kind of standards or similar standards to UL. However, it's kind of like self-police. Self-police. So mm -hmm. like you can stamp that on anything you want and uh, you'll get in trouble if they catch you and it didn't meet those standards. So, but I'd still rather have that than nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, and, and, and I say that like, I believe most people are probably following the CE. Uh, yeah. So I, I, yeah, they're, they're honest. I they're should truthful. know the difference between the two, but like, I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't not trust this in anything else. So there's no reason for me not to trust it here. Yeah. All right. So I don't know. The drivers in this one to me look better. And you can see in the top right or in the top left, the fans are driven by an LED driver too. Yeah, I actually have a shot of that, which is kind of <laughs> interesting. So the next one here. So that. Other black LED driver, so while I'm busy feeling like the drivers are the right tool for the right job, right. there's a black LED driver here that's driving the fans. So they, they, <laughs> they use that one specifically just for the fans, so it's well, kind of you interesting. Can, and you can tell, like, as you turn up the blue channel, uh, one fan starts to crank a little louder, and as you turn up the white channel, the other fan starts to crank up a little louder, and the fan adjusts by the intensity of the LEDs. And you can see the CE mark here as well. So, uh, I don't know, uh, all in all, I'm going to have to say that if you ask me what I know today, the uh, Mars Aqua one had no CE on it, didn't have any marks. It was just a, in fact, it's just like a little black box with a bunch of parts inside. Something like, like a hobby box. It's like a too. hobby box. Yeah. Versus that one, if you ask me which one I'd prefer, it'll be the CE one. It's got labels yeah. and numbers so, and stuff on it. So uh, I guess a little bit of a win to the, the, to the wills there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, also it's just got the same grid of LED lights that you'd expect, but the lenses are clear, clear yeah. instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, next shot here. Um, All right, so Filizon, or Fleazon. Uh, so Fleazon here is the exact same thing. I'm not it gonna looks, bore you with it. Yeah. It's the exact same light inside, right? Mm. And so, this is an important part, though, I wanted to share with yeah. you. So everybody came to me and said, oh, the Fleazon is the exact same thing. It has the same so Brent uh, outlet and, I, yeah. and blah, 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 blah. It looks the same. Yeah. All the parts are in the side are the same. And uh, like, it leads you to believe that, oh, they must just be all coming out of the same factory, like, right? Two companies want to make a reflight. They send it to one factory, and they just make the same thing, but, twi but two different ways. Might be. My experience is no. 
<laughs> uh, actually. So I, you know, spent many, many, many years thinking that same thing. And along the way, I just continually got surprised that is not the case. Mm. And you start to look for the finer details, and that's where you start to see it, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so even though all the componentry is the same, they're all in the same places, the LED grid's the exact same, performance is pretty darn similar, mm. probably because of that. What happens is uh, uh, Asia rips off uh, like American products all the time. And it, yep. It's just part of the world that we live in. Uh, and but like they also rip off themselves. Each other. So China rips <laughs> off China too. Uh, yeah. they're equal opportunity. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, and so if somebody probably saw it selling really good on Amazon and uh, made one exactly like ordered it. Ordered all of the same parts because yeah. I can you can order the exact same things. And there's a couple of things that I saw in here that makes me believe that. Okay. Uh, one of which is while they look identical, the Fleazon has that hybrid uh, European like oh, uh, yeah. daisy chain. Daisy chain. But well, this one's got a US one. Everything else about it for one of the Little things. Little subtleties. The screws on this one are shiny, and in this one, they're dull. <laughs> so that factory isn't using different screws. Now, no. maybe they came off a different line, they bought a different screws. Well, I screws. mean, even their, their air grids and everything is different. They've got their names on there stamped and versus carved in, so. So here's the thing, man, is the reason I share this in this level of detail is because it would seem like they're all the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, but you open up the box and you see that they're not the same thing yeah. in componentry. You would see that the lenses are actually different. You'd see that even the ones with the same lenses perform different. Well, you saw, so, the, you saw the spectrum alone between those two, even though they were both pretty well spiced. One was at like 460, 461. Mm -hmm. The other one's at like 455, 454. It could be the bins, you know, the whatever they're pulling the LEDs out of. But it could be completely different factories. It's very much whatever it was probably the, I mean, this is designed to be the cheapest product possible, mm -hmm. right? I mean, they're, they're not going for building a Ferrari here. The goal here is to make this affordable. And so they selected probably the cheapest binning process out there. And that's why even probably using the same one, they have slightly, slightly different, different peaks, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. As, I mean, we're just guessing here, the best of our ability. All right, but next one. Uh, this one's actually a little bit different uh, in some interesting ways. Yeah, the Viper Spectre. This is a popular one. This was the second, uh, the uh, second most expensive out of the group. So 120 bucks for this thing, but it's got a, this you know, gray form factor here. It's got a display on it. Yeah. So I got one thing here, to, a couple of things to note on this mm. one. All of them. A, there's a cord that comes out of the top, but this is actually the power cord. So there's no more daisy chaining the yes. one tens together. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that personally. Okay. Uh, if you want the other ones, you know how to get it. But for me, I don't want that exposed area. It just, it's, it's a safety issue I just don't like. The other thing on this one is that it has a way more robust hanging bracket. It does, yeah, right? for sure. All right, so here's the, here's the thing that why that matters. And, and I never thought about this until mm. the guy over at Reef Breeders actually talked to me about this yeah. one. Uh, is that these things all have full 120 volt power hanging over your tank. Right. Yeah. The most LEDs we have like are DC. A, yeah, they have a driver box, and then it's DC, and then yeah, it goes into the light. Falling in, man. Everybody's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, if this thing falls in, well, I got my hands in the tank. I better not be grounded, right? Uh, <laughs> because things go bad. Now that isn't to knock these things, because that, that's always been the case with halides mm -hmm. oh, and yeah. T5s and all Same that thing. stuff. Yep. Right. Exactly. So know that, but there is a difference in safety there. Like um, almost all of the LEDs, all the LEDs I think that I can think of that we sell are all DC and don't. That doesn't have that safety issue. But back when metal halides, T5s that we've almost all of us have used had that same issue. So that's actually one of the things I think about the reef breeders. It was like an evolution. Is that I'm pretty certain that the uh, DC power supply is external in this case. So with the reef breeders, you don't have the one or 120 volt over there. Yeah. But why I actually uh, discuss this more is because a lot of these guys have these really like flimsy uh, connections on them. This is actually kind of sturdy, but what comes with it is like a, a little clip. Yeah, the, the, almost like a, a keychain type clip. It's really thinner. It's thinner Thin. metal. It's not like your heavy duty carabiner. Yeah. And they come off. Mm. And so I personally wouldn't use the hanging bracket that comes with most of these that ha if it has a weak connection because I don't want 120 falling in my tank. I don't want to like 
have any reason as to why that would fall in there. Mm. It's not good for me, my family, or anything. So, so this one came with a more robust. The, this is definitely, in this case, so you have a hanging bracket that like Screws threads in, on here. Yeah. There was way, way, way more robust. If yeah. you see it in person, you would agree 100%. Yeah. So I actually like that about this one more. And so uh, one of the things you also note is all those guys had really simple innards to them. You know, there yeah. was like a ballast in there and a little potentiometer or whatnot, uh, yep. like, and you just analog control. Open up the Vector Spira, uh, uh, or Viper the Spectra. Vi Vi Spectra. This was actually very interesting to me. Uh, is when you look in here, will you come back to me, uh, Dave? Okay. When you look in here, Not you can see are... the the actual heat sink, and it's like ah, this is an upgrade. Sink. Yeah. Right. And you're like ah, like... like no license plate. I'm happy. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, this is actually somebody who cared about it when they built it, right? And like they they want longevity out of it because they know. Most people buying this off Amazon is never going to unscrew it. We'll never know if there's a, uh, uh, mm. a, uh, like a heat sink wow. in it. Probably don't care how long it lasts. Half, Why spend that money? Uh, in, well, maybe even half the time don't even know what the heat sink is actually utilized for, what its real purpose is for. What, most people probably don't even know heat sink is important. I barely, right? Yeah. All right, so, but for me, I look in there and like, ah, it's heat there. sink. Awesome, cool. man. Like, great news. All right, kind of. Not really. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to. Uh, this is an upgrade. I would. I would choose this over the other one. So let's look at it again. It's very suspiciously only as big as the two holes in the top of the mm -hmm. light. So as soon as you can't see it anymore, suspiciously, it's not there anymore. Yeah. So apparently, we only care about the LEDs in the center. Because oh, the LEDs <laughs> do cover that entire board. Yeah, that's true. They do cover that entire board. Fairly only care about the ones in the I, middle. I also have the sneaky suspicion that, you know, if we ran this thing for multiple hours, that even the edges the, of the heat sink that don't have a heat sink would be cool to the touch. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say hard how to much say. effort they put into uh, it. I was really impressed, and then when I took it apart, uh, like, less so. So. I still they made winner. an effort. Yeah, still a winner. Made an effort uh, of the four, but I got it. Could have been better. All okay. right. So then uh, the next piece is very interesting. If this looks familiar to you, it's because it looks identical to those same black boxes that were in the Mars Aqua. Oh, yeah. Can you can you find the Mars Aqua picture maybe? Black one. And right there. Oh, oh, right there. I think that oh, one. Or back one. Yep. Yep. There you go. So I mean. Again, they might they're not necessarily the same thing, but they look pretty similar. Relatively similar. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, I'm definitely not going to tell you they're the same thing, but it's the same approach here. So there's just yeah. two uh, no-name ballasts in it. We don't have the C marks and stuff anymore. Kind of a disappointment. But there's actually a little control board in there. That's probably because there there might be controlling it with PWM now instead of analog. It's hard to say exactly. Yeah, because this doing. is different than uh, I, I don't have an analog control and. For PW, those are wondering what PWM that is that uh, flickers the light off and on at a different rate mm -hmm. so that it looks dimmer to the eye or looks brighter to the eye. Okay, so this matters. I'm going to tell you why. All right, and at least uh, this is what I'm told. Yeah. Right? Okay, so here's the thing with uh, the drivers whether you control it analog, you control it with a PWM. Yeah. yeah like, again, like the, with the PWM, it's flickering. So if it's on, 50% of the time, it's at 50% power. Yeah. Now, it's flickering faster than your eye can recognize it, so you won't even see. It just looks dimmer. Sometimes you can. Sometimes you can't. And that's like with a video, oh. or you can actually see flicker. With the worst flicker. models out there, uh, you can actually see it on your camera, your video camera. Uh, most, even worse with your eyes. once you see it on the video camera, you can actually see it with your eyes usually. Yeah, that's true. Once you know what you're looking for. Uh, but... All right, so here's the thing, though, with the analog ones, which are all, all or some of these, at least, uh, what happens is you're actually turning down the voltage to it. You're getting less power, dimming them down. Dimming them down, direct voltage, mm -hmm. right? So what I'm told is that will actually switch, shift the spectrum over, hmm. right? So when you change it, it'll change this, the, the spectrum output of the uh, LED, it will also shorten the lifespan of the LED mm. and probably shift it permanently over time. 
I don't know all those things for sure. I haven't tested those things. Uh, those are what, if you go Google this, this is what like every LED person will tell you. I mean, we're, right? we're talking like an application far outside of the reef tank yeah. hobby actually has the same concerns. Yeah, th they'll say this is the cheapest possible way to drive uh, LED mm. and it has all of these uh, challenges attached to it. That's mm. why they do it differently now. So what we did actually is take uh, just the blue spectrum because I don't want to bore you with all of it. Yeah. But, uh, and we ran it at 100%, and then we ran it at 25%. Took shots of each one. And took a spectrum shot just to see if it does change, and if like one of these ballasts does this significantly better than the other one. And so here you are. All right, so All right. up first is, the, this is the Mars Blue, so you can see it toggled back and forth. Uh, this is 100%, this is 25%. You can watch that by the Lux. But you see the, the nanometer peak shift. So, 447, 449. But there's more than just that. So this is the Mars one? This is Mars. Yeah, and so you can see that you're losing some of the deep blue there. It's not just shifting spectrum a little bit, you're just losing some of it, and even the, the uh, hmm. uh, UV goes down. And again, if you're looking for, you want to know which one is the bright one is not, there's a, that little orange box that says Lux in it. Yep. The higher one is the 100%. It's 100%. All right, so I don't know. I would say it did shift. And it, what it does is shift to the right a little bit, uh, when you turn down the power. Yeah. All right. So next one. This is the flea's on. So flea's on. Again, yeah. as you move, as you go lower, it shifts to the right. So and this th one was on the verge to begin with. Yeah, I was already at 460, and I didn't really want to be there to begin with. And now I'm going to like 461 or something like that. 463, it looks like. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, is it gonna like make or break it? N no, but you're already outside of the sweet spot and you're just kind of moving a little bit more. And I don't really know what's gonna happen over time here either. So, right. uh, I don't know. Hmm. So, I don't know, I guess it kind of proved to be true a little bit. Specifically with this one too, because one of the big questions was is, are we just shifting the ratio of all of these oh, LEDs? Yeah. Or, uh, and this one just seems to be predominantly one. This so. is like we talked about. There seems to be only one blue color in this entire box, and this is what it's doing. Yeah, so it's shifting. So I don't think it's a ratio mix, mix changing. It's probably actually the, it is, when you run it at low voltage, it's actually shifting its output. All right, so this one is the, uh, the Viper vi Spectra. The Viper Spectra. So here we've got a more fuller uh, array of blue LEDs. Mm -hmm. And so it might be, it's doing the same kind of thing, right? It's 448 to 447 in the peak, uh, but probably changing the ratio more than it is actually changing the actual spectrum. My guess is this one is actually changing the ratio. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. And, and it's, it, it, because it isn't shifting over as much, it's just kind of shifting. So when I say shifting the ratio, I mean, this one is mixing a bunch of different blue LEDs, obviously, Yeah. right? And so when you turn it down, it's probably not scaling them absolutely perfect. Perfectly. And that's probably what you're seeing in this okay. case. Yep. So I don't know, uh, but that might be the PWM one here that is just doing it a little bit better, especially this in a more complex scenario with more LEDs. It's the one with the digital face, which makes, it lead, makes you lead the you know, believe that it's makes the me PWM. believe that. I yeah. don't know for sure. Yeah. All right. Next one. Uh, same, similar as the. This is the wills. So similar as the fleas on. Uh, as we saw, the peak was already a little further left, but it shifts it over to 458. All right. So here's the deal. This is the this is the big thing. Drum roll, please. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who is the winner? Right. I mean, like we're gonna. I think all of you have probably heard and saw. But I got something else actually coming up right after the winter that I think you guys are going to want to see as well. So yeah. hold in. Uh, like this is, there's actually an even bigger question, I think, coming True. after the winter here. Yeah. All right. So winner for you? Uh, the Viper Spectra. I think it's got the fuller spectrum. Uh, it's got, yeah. Personally, I like the controls. You know, I, I can, I know where I'm going to be. It's got a remote, which is kind of a, a neat feature too. Um, but, you know, Overall winner, I think in the par distribution, it kind of won in a couple places over like the fleas on, but uh, my winner. All right, so here's the thing. We're not only just gonna give you the winner, but we're also gonna tell you how to use it, and then we're gonna give you an alternative as well. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so here's the thing, is for me it was a hands down. Like, so the, the, the spread was better, mm. the par was uh, identical, I mean, identical-ish. Yeah. Uh, the uh, control is, is better. Yep. Uh, the spectrum uh, offering is way better. Not the dynamic. Blending is more a challenge because of the offering Raise in the form though. factor that it's in. Yeah. All right. 
So this is the way that I would personally use this. Okay. Right? And so I would mount it high. Uh, 14 inches minimum. would be the bare minimum. Bare I minimum. actually probably wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that unless no. you made me. No. Right? <laughs> That's true. I'd probably be between 18 and 24 Somewhere inches. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Right? Uh, and I try to find a way where it's not going to shine in my eyes. Uh, maybe I angle maybe, it a little bit, or I don't maybe know. Maybe it goes in a floating hood yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah a floating find a floating hood, hood yeah. create whatever. So, because uh, it's probably going to shine in your eyes uh, that high. So I'd probably avoid that. But you're going to get the best, better performance out of it that high. I feel like I'm going to produce the better reef tank with this light. Is the thing mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm the. Biggest reason actually isn't the spread in this case to get it up high, because I think you could dance around that if you wanted to. Lower them down, uh, add multiple units. You know, you just accept less than perfect performance. But it's the spectrum blending and the little laser beams of UV and red and green and stuff mm. that I, I want to avoid. And I think it's probably one of the quietest problems out there. Yeah. There's the little laser beams of spectrum. Like spectrum matters. Uh, there's a whole video of mastering spectrum. You should probably watch it if you're interested. Cool. This is the reason that I would raise it up. Yeah. All right. And as far as like spacing it would go, I would probably run them sideways on a rectangle tank. You yeah. know, like front that. to back. And space them maybe 18 inches uh, if I was gonna raise them real high. If for some reason, like, it just didn't want to listen to me and <laughs> I wanted to go down to, like, 14 inch, I'd probably space them pretty darn close Closer to each together. other. Like, it would start to look like uh, that wall of Orphix, yep. you know? Uh, it's just, like, right next to each other. And then I'd tune them way down. But, like, all that overlapping light would probably solve my spectrum issue. And then mm. it would definitely solve the, the spread issue. Maybe the spectrum issue, but definitely the spread issue when you put them really close together and turn them way down. You're defeating a little bit of the gain because of the cost by doing that, but that's probably how I would run them. Yeah. So uh, that's how I'd run it uh, based on the data that we've collected. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully you guys agree. I can't wait to read bucks. the comments. Yeah. All right. So here's the, the real thing. Yeah. This is the next piece yeah. of the whole thing. Okay. Dave, shameless plug. <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay. So here's the thing, man. Uh, people ask all the time, like, uh, or I see it all the time, like, all those guys are biased. You know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 100% you know, we're biased. You're biased too. Uh, and so my bias is predominantly, I want to help people be successful with their tanks. Right. Right. And uh, that is somewhat self serving. You know why? Well, because we carry the products that you want to recommend to them. No, it's because people <laughs> that, reefers that are successful spend more money. End of story, man. I hate to say it like it's, okay. it's like that, but that's just true. And it's, self, it's not self-serving, man. It's how we help each other succeed. Mm. So if we can use information to help you guys succeed and achieve your dreams, that is why we do it, right? Yeah. So we're biased here. I also sell stuff. I also know people in the industry. I don't know. I, I don't know where my old bias comes from. Other people have bias uh, in the essence that uh, I don't care how great it is. I want it cheap. Everybody has bias. There you go. So yes, it's true. It exists in the universe. All right. So that said, I want to like poke uh, the bear here pretty hard. Okay. Right. <laughs> so we explain this. I think you can use all the data. You can interpret it for how you would use these lights. Yeah. But they're all alternatives. So you might think to yourself mm -hmm. right now, like, oh well, the they're so much cheaper than the Radions and the AIs and blah blah right, blah. Right. 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 Is that true? Well, okay. So this is 120 bucks. Mm -hmm. And for $90 more, there's an AI Prime in the world, right? Yep. So I think we can go to the next slide here, man. Uh, there is always somebody willing to do it cheaper. Oh, there you go. So <laughs> there is a tattoo that somebody wants there, and that is what the guy's getting. Yeah, okay. So you're always willing to do it cheaper, so it's always true. That you can true. do it cheaper. No matter what. Let's talk about what you're getting for cheaper in, in this case, right? Okay. So if you really do the math. Okay. Now, like, go into this making an intelligent decision. Okay. I want to save as much money as possible, but I also want to balance set with achieving the goals that I want. Okay, so what you just told me in the way that you would recommend using this is, okay, I spent, I spent my 120 bucks, I got this thing. Now, I'm going to raise it up in the air so I can get the best spread possible from it, so I can get the best you know, spectrum split, uh, you know, blending possible. So now I'm using this thing optimally, right? And uh, what I do is I am at 18 inches, or I'm at 24 inches, and 
all of that par that I bought, you know, for the 120 bucks, you know, starts to slowly decline as I go higher. Now you're telling me for to achieve the the good the spectrum, I got to turn down, I got to lose 70% of my white output, meaning I'm losing another 30% of par output because it's high and because my channels are down. So you know, in the, at the end, what am I left with? What am I, well, I'm left with you know a par output similar to you know other lights out there in a smaller form factor. Kind of, yeah, yeah. And so like if you just, if you do a little bit of a comparison, so yep. when you're shopping, don't just do what we're talking about here today. Go out and look at all of the par graphs out there and look for the things. And actually, uh, Randy and I are going to do like a breakdown of all of the LED lights out there. And I think like we're going to break episodes. them out by cost per par, starting with the most expensive, working towards the cheapest uh, yeah. at the end. So you can really do an evaluation on your own of like, where point like am I willing to spend to like get that you know perceived yeah. goal because right, right. Uh, you might be surprised that actually some of the better options are cheaper than you think as par wise. Yep. So this is actually an interesting one because you brought this up today, and this is why we're looking at this. Yes, because Randy put <laughs> this up. I said you know by so we looked at the par uh, of this Viper Spectra, and I said you know that's really similar to a single AI Prime in that same twenty four by twenty four inch area that we tested. Mm -hmm. uh, so we pulled up the numbers and. Uh, the one, the, what you're looking at on the left here, and, and feel free to pause it you know, as you get there, is we've tuned this Viper Spectra to our custom setting. We've raised it to 24 inches. This is the PAR output. 146 total average PAR. Uh, AI Prime mounted at 14 inches uh, with our BRS custom spectrum. 92 PAR total average. All right, so this is the story that you're gonna see here. Yeah. The uh, Viper Spectra had 35% more PAR. And it had it for about half the cost. Yeah. Right? It is. Okay. Yeah. And specifically when you tuned them both to how you'd actually use it. So the AI Prime was some of the channels were tuned down. Yes. Just like we tuned down the uh, Viper Spectre to achieve yep. that because that's the most valuable way to measure them is like in a way, in the a real world way to use, use it. Yeah. Right? All right. So at 35% less par, and it costs you know 220 bucks instead of 100. Ah, uh, uh, it costs 90 dollars more. So 200, 210 versus 110. Except it comes in a form factor that's about this big. It's pretty small. I can control it from my phone. Yes. There's a whole array of different mounting solutions. I don't have 110 over my tank. It, it, the longevity here is probably way past uh, the you know black box's longevity i mean uh, even customer even like support for the product is probably oh yeah if i have support uh, definitely I, if it actually broke is it like the ecotech and ai team will actually help you and yeah. then when you open it up man it's pretty clear that this is a different caliber of product <laughs> i mean there you can yeah. see the electronics that went into this you can see the heat sink the the whole body is a heat sink right for 30 percent 30 percent less par roughly yeah and it costs more but not that much more. 90 90 dollars and here's here's the thing are you even going to use that par so does not, the 30 percent matter does the 30 percent even matter so if you're just going to use this to have frog spawn and mushrooms and uh, you know, some hammers, uh, a cans, chalices, all these star pops, yeah, all this, the, yeah, yeah. A, a, a cans, all that stuff. A single AR Prime can do it in a 24 by 24. If I'm area. just going to tune down the, the black box anyway, I don't know. And then we mm. start to think about the cost. So this is the the piece, man, for me. Okay. Right. Like when you read the reviews, everybody admits that they don't last a whole lot. There's that well. there's a handful that you know fail after a certain amount of time, and now you have to buy another one. So if I'm doing this analysis and I'm like, ah, I should get the AI, uh, I shouldn't. I'm going to save the the ninety bucks and yep. get the, the that instead of the AI Prime. Well, when it breaks in six months, fuck. <laughs> you know, I just totally wasted my money, man, right? Uh, like, it's a really big oh, deal. It's, I, I made the tough, wrong decision. It's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, that's a okay, tough when I've done swallow. the analysis, you know? And so make that analysis uh, and think about it, yeah. and uh, I don't know. So I'm not trying to tell you uh, one way or the other, and you ask me what my bias here. My bias is that you're successful and you make the right Long decision term. for yourself, yeah. right? Use the information you got today, mm. you can, like evaluate it in any way that you want. It's all just data and you can make the decision for yourself. Yep. Now here is the one that I think is going the, to actually be a little is, bit more of a kicker. This right? is the, oh, the, the make you feel like a, the make a feel like a shil little shilly? No, 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 like no. Uh, in the essence that like, 
if everybody said if the Radeon is a value, you would immediately start laughing. Like, uh, mm. ha, 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 the joke's on you, right? Like, this is yeah. the best value power, power, per power out there. Like, oh, yeah. No, man. So let's actually use the data to make that decision. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's look at this guy right here. Okay. Okay. So uh, total average par uh, of the, this one was 174. Total average par of the a, uh, of the XR15 blue. One, so it's 146 for the Viper Spira at 24 inches at our custom setting, and the Radeon blue 224 total average par. So almost double. Okay, so there's actually the secret sauce reason for that, uh, and this is what it is: is the blue allows you to turn all of the channels to 100%. And use them all. Use them all. Yeah. Not turn stuff down 30%. <laughs> That's true. Right? Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing, is to get a similar par number, or at least into that universe, you'll probably go over it. Yeah. You'd need two black boxes to match one XR15. That's true, right? yeah. So the cost now is 220 versus uh, what, 420. 400, 420? Yeah. It's again double, but a different caliber of product. Well, and right? my, I mean, when you think about trying to fit two of these over the same area and, you know, even size wise, you know, build quality wise, all the uh, controllability, you know, full spectrum, the usability, like you said, of all of the channels. I mean, is it worth saving for an extra month or two to get to double? Well, so I, I don't know, man. Don't Can know. you go find, so this is the prime here. Yeah. Uh, like I'll like, show you the graph. I mean, this is just, uh, 14 inches, it's super duper flat, man, yeah. right? So this is one where we tested a single AI Prime in a 24 by 24 inch area and found that it actually hit more than 70% of data points, top, middle, bottom of the tank, in ranges for LPS, 75 to 150. Super, it hit it. This is LPS light all day, all super day easy to install, super small. 210 right? bucks. Uh, all right, so uh, actually skip that one and go right to the, uh, the XR15. There we go. All right, this is the one, man. When we talked about that palladium, platinum, whatever, yeah, standard, yeah. This is eight inches off the water. Okay, this is eight inches off the water. Eight. Mm. Like this more is more light is getting into the. This tank. is super, super low, and look at it, seventy-two percent in the center four inches of the tank, two seventy-eight, and the outside edges of the tank, two hundred one. Right. That's it's the seven. At the edges of the tank, the same as the center. Right. Yeah, that's really. So. Good. Is that smaller form factor, mm. all the ability, the wider spectrum, the better blending, better shimmer, you know, better like warranty, better all of that stuff, better mounting options, the ability to put it closer, uh, and the fact that it's probably gonna last longer. Is it worth it? Again, is it worth, you know, instead of 200 bucks, is it worth the 400 bucks? Mm -hmm. I don't know, you can make up that decision for yourself, but this if one the of them breaks. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what he said. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, so yeah. uh, you heard my bias on this one. Shameless plug for some of the stuff that we do sell here. Yeah, that's true. But even beyond that, so a lot of you guys do use all this stuff. Okay. I think that hopefully you can use this data, use it even better, help your friends use it even better. And these are all entry level products, man. So like uh, use them, and then three years from now, you know, them, yeah. hopefully your loser boss gives you a uh, raise, and we buy <laughs> something new, right? Uh, we just progress. Yeah. Well, hopefully you walked away with like, and that question to that answer like if you have one of these you I bet you eyes are opened all over the reefing community for people that have these about mounting height and intensity settings and spectrum and stuff like that there's stuff in here for you to actually go make changes if you have to I can tell you right now I already know how I'd use this and how do I achieve results yeah. from it just from looking at the data when right? I had when I owned one of these I had no idea and I Probably, I probably had it at eight, you know, eight inches above the tank, and you can visibly see some shaft. Like I had no idea how how to use it, but nobody's ever told me how to use it. Well, the, the easy thing is like go rent a par meter for seventy-five bucks. Except for there's like a five hundred dollar deposit on the thing. Well, too, yeah, right? it's right? Well like, over the way cost more than what I spent. Things. And you'll get it back, but uh, but when something has a thousand par in the center, mm. and then again, if if you can see that photo all the way from the front, I mean, with your camera, maybe you can catch it. Uh, uh, all the way to the front. Oh, I the mean, you can one before that. So you can see two very distinct bright spots. In, in most the lights, actually, the center would be the brightest spot. Because that's where they intersect. But here, there's yep. the shape of the uh, lenses 
make it such a laser beam. Actually, you can see that the, the, the mounting solution has a little bit of a sag in there, mm. and that's why they're aimed a little bit out. Uh, and you can yeah. see, because the lights are so focused, how big of a deal that actually makes as uh, where the light mm. actually goes. Mount your and lights so, higher, people. You know, for, in this case, 75 bucks for the PAR meter yeah. would probably allow you to optimize this to perform very similar to other options if you knew what you were looking for and uh, did it intelligently. Mm, I just want a better better tank. Wait, actually, can you go back to uh, those those three photos? Because if you go to the next one here, it's the same same thing. You can see very mm -hmm. distinctly that three. there is three things. Yeah. Now look at this black box here. He's mounted higher. High. Look high. That. That, right? That's got to be 18 to 24 inches. I'm guessing it's closer to like 16 inches, okay. but it's hard to tell from this angle. Yeah, it is hard to But see. it's definitely high. And you can see that it's spilling onto the wall a good deal. But look at the but tank look, below. The result you're getting is a nice, even coat of par. Everything looks lit up around the same, yeah, except yeah. for the extreme edges, but. Okay, so okay. moral of the story, learn how to do it. Uh, hope you learned something. Hopefully this goes way better than last time. You guys don't eat me alive. <laughs> uh, I swore I would never do a black box video again after the last one, uh, but. Uh, hey, we're just trying to help. Poke here. the bear. There's enough people using these. Like, Why not give them some angle on what to use, how to use them? All right, next week, flow on the 360. Uh, we implemented the solution yesterday. I really like it. I just didn't have all the cameras ready to show all the things that we did, and I really want to demonstrate it really well. Yeah. So next week, uh, we'll see that. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. There you go. See you guys. Uh, have a good weekend. Thunder. <laughs>